Hi guys, I'm Richard, this is Obertino, welcome back to the channel. If you've been watching the series so far, thanks so much, there's been a load of views on the videos. In today's episode, we're going to Mount Fuji in Japan. We're going to be staying in a little town called Hakone, which is nearby. And if you've been following the series so far, you'll know we've spent the previous two episodes in Kyoto. We were supposed to spend a third day in Kyoto, however, due to the weather, we've decided to head to Mount Fuji a day early for the best chance of seeing it. So if you're planning a trip over there and want the best chance to see Mount Fuji and you've only got one shot, keep an eye on the weather. I'll put on screen the tool that I used. It was really useful. It showed the view of Mount Fuji from different angles on different days. And the day we were originally supposed to go was showing as terrible weather. And the day earlier was giving a really good chance for us to see it. So we booked ourselves onto the green car of the bullet train and the green car is like first class in Japan. So I'll show you a bit of the features that you get on there. And we also got to pick seats that were on the right side where we had a chance of seeing Mount Fuji from the train. Oh wow, there it is. Look at that. There aren't many things in life that I think are breathtaking, but I literally just gasped on this quiet carriage on the train when I saw Mount Fuji. I didn't expect it to look this clear, or I didn't know if we would even see it at all. We're gonna take some cable cars up and get a lot closer to Mount Fuji, but even seeing it from here is amazing. If you take this journey on the bullet train, you get a three or four minute window where you can see Mount Fuji, as long as it's visible. After this bullet train, we're going to be getting on a few more modes of transport. You take another train and then a cable car and then a ropeway to finally get as close to Mount Fuji as we can from here. So you'll see that in just a second and you might be wondering what we did with our luggage while we were doing all of this because we're on a long trip. We actually sent the luggage directly from our Kyoto hotel to Tokyo. So we're just bringing hand luggage for this part of the journey because we're going to be on the move quite a bit. made it to Mount Fuji a day earlier uh, than we planned to do and as you can see behind me we can see it quite nice today. The forecast for tomorrow uh, was not so good, it was going to be covered in clouds so yeah we've come to have a look at it now. I'll uh, do a little montage of uh, some shots that we've taken. viewpoints for Mount Fuji and there's an interesting delicacy in this area. There are natural hot springs here that have a very high sulfur content and they use it to cook eggs which turn black and supposedly if you consume one of these eggs you add seven years to your life so it's a bit of a mini blue zone. You buy the eggs in a pack of four for 500 yen which is about £2.60 and I'm about to try them out. Yeah. <laughs> 
actually, that's the shell of it. What's it smell it like? It doesn't smell like all of That's just one of the things I've got. I thought you actually ate the black part of it. like a normal egg, it's done it. Really? Nice and hot at least. And? It just tastes like a egg. But it's supposed to like, what, seven years to the lunch. Do you want to try it? After I ate the first egg on camera, I realised that they gave you some salt for the other eggs to eat, which makes it a little bit nicer, but they're still very dry. And I was a little bit disappointed that the actual egg inside wasn't black. You can see the yolk is a little bit black, but not quite what I expected. And I ended up eating all four eggs. So if you're going to do the same, make sure you take some water with you to wash it down. After this, we took in the view of Mount Fuji from this viewpoint for a few more minutes. I'm really glad we came on this day. We got an amazing view from the train and then a great view again from here with just a small bit of cloud coverage. We jumped back on the ropeway to see Mount Fuji from a different viewpoint. It looks like a lot of tourists don't make it to the second checkpoint or they just skip it because it's in nature and there's not many people there, but that was a really nice view of it. And from there we made our way back onto the ropeway once again to go down to get onto a ship on the lake. The ships on the lake look really cool, they're like old pirate ships with a Japanese twist. We made our way on board and we had a chance to take in the scenery and get one last glimpse of Mount Fuji before we explored the opposite side of the lake. We then took a short walk to see a red Tory gate on the water. Now the queue was really big here, we've already seen quite a few of these around Japan so we didn't stick around there too long. I just got this bit of footage and then we headed back and we got to see a few cherry blossoms finally, which is something we've not seen a whole lot of in Japan so far so it was quite nice to see those by the water up close before we finally headed to our accommodation that we were staying at in Hakone. A lot of the accommodation in Hakone is mega expensive and we went during Golden Week which is a huge holiday in Japan and pushes prices even higher but we were lucky to get a place at Hakone Tent which gives you a traditional Japanese experience staying there. They've also got hot springs and they've got a nice area where you can go and get some food and drinks and just chill out after a long day. So we got settled into the room and made our beds, which were pretty much on the floor, but that's the traditional way in Japan. I was a little bit apprehensive about sleeping this way, but it's actually really peaceful and comfortable, surprisingly. After this, we headed back downstairs to take a closer look at the bar and to have a dip in the hot springs. But before we do that, I just wanted to point out the amazing collection of books that they have at Hakone Tent, including this one. The book that you've just seen in the hotel is actually my book. It's How to Win at Life. And I published this last year and released it on Amazon. With some clever marketing, I managed to get it to number one in its category. It's quite a short read. It's under 100 pages, quite proud of it. It's about the journey that we all take through life and how we're all trying to win. So if you want to check it out, it's How to Win at Life, Richard Overton on Amazon. It's got a few things in there from previous trips that I've done, so I'm there in Iceland. There's a chapel in Helsinki. It's not solely based around travel, uh, but there's a few interesting places in there, so check it out if you like How to Win a Life on Amazon. Let's get back to the video. just been in the hot springs at the hotel that you can book out for up to an hour they were absolutely boiling and they're all natural it's really difficult to stay in there for more than a few minutes never mind a full hour but such a cool experience you've got to do it if you're in Hakone and now we're having a drink and chilling out playing a game of Jenga that's one of many games that they have in the hotel and we ended up in an unbelievable Jenga battle it was off the top of the camera from what you can see here it got so tall and we got an audience that were watching us at one point and cheering us on. 
Don't stand. It's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> After that epic Jenga battle, I tried out some Japanese whiskies and we took a short walk to the local supermarket to get some water for the evening and then get our heads down. The following morning we checked out of Hakone Tent. It was just a short stay but I would definitely recommend it. Amazing place to stay, especially if you're there to see Mount Fuji and check out the hot springs. They've got a partnership with a cafe on the end of the street so we got to go there and fuel up on a good breakfast for the journey ahead to Tokyo. I had eggs and cheese on toast with a glass of orange juice and I think Jade had some sort of tofu dish which came with a yoghurt and a hot drink. Really tasty and a great start to the day, plus a bit of a discount from the hotel. So now we're leaving Hakone. It's been a jam-packed 24 hours or so, but we're heading on to a big one and it is really a big one because it's Tokyo, actually the biggest city in the world based on population. So I'd like to ask your opinion on this one. There's a few different ways we can take it. I can do one mega video of all of Tokyo, or I could do shorter videos of the different districts within Tokyo. There's Ginza, Shinjuku, Shibuya. There's loads of different regions within Tokyo that are like cities themselves. So let me know what you think, either in the comments or drop me a message on Instagram, and we'll see what's next in the series. <laughs> watching if you enjoyed it please leave a like and a comment down below if you want to keep up with the rest of the series make sure you subscribe and you should be able to watch one or two of the videos somewhere on the screen here or maybe over here <laughs> and until then see you next time <laughs> <laughs>